Hey guys, my name is Russian Badger, and the first thing I want to say is thank you very much for your very kind words on the Assault Rifle Guide. I know you guys are usually very generous with your feedback, but especially on that video, thank you very much. Despite the fact that one of you called me Bro Cookie, and I still don't know how to react to that. That's one of those like, uh, I need an adult, I, do I don't understand if that's good or bad. Despite the fact that, you know, you guys know that I have so many synonyms for bro, but bro cookie is pushing it just a little bit. I have never heard bro cookie before, and the worst part is it's wiggling its way into my daily vocabulary, which is awful, especially when you're talking to a potential Korean waifu, and you almost call her bro cookie. I almost did that today. It was very scary. But, okay, look at this. I get shot at the top of the hill, but my technique was I decided to from the grave, make my body roll all the way down the hill and get revived down here. That's Getting inertia while you're running is very important. And look at this. Okay, I, I thought I'd revive him, but I picked up the wrong kit. I don't think burning a hole in this guy's pants is going to help him come back to life anytime soon. But the Scar H01 and a, a second gentleman over here also would like to be scarred. And I was going to deal scars to the third guy, but he went ahead and just died anyways. Because he knows how good the Scar is. And... I still don't get the justification from DICE. You know, with, with with the SCAR and the G3A3, I think to myself, okay, DICE, this is what you did. And I get this gentleman here, and I, I only get headshots. I only, okay, check out this gentleman's name over here, though. For some reason, I read this as Graves as the time, Iron Graves, and yet another headshot, but you guys know the Graves that I'm talking about, right? And it just so happened that guy ran around with a shotgun. And I didn't, I, why did I go full auto? But this guy just reminded me of the Graves, and what am I going to do with a stinger? You know the Graves like, I hope you weren't planning on dying of natural causes. See, Graves gets me right here. I got your darkness. You guys know that Graves, right? But the catch is, Duckling is in a, he's always in the best position for spawns. He's like a better lurking monster than me. Okay, this is Duckling right here. Hello, sir. What would you like to buy today? All right, here's what we got. We got. Apple juice, grape juice, milk, we got lemonade, and whatever this is, and a croissant. You see, this is why Tiny Duckling is the best right here. The, his spawn points are so great, like he's a genuinely intelligent player. And okay, let's wait for Kia. Kia, what did you do here? Why did you fall off the roof like that, Kia? That was a little unnecessary, but I get... Unicorn utters here with some C4, and there's two other gentlemen over here. Okay, so I decided to throw the C4 down first, and then I get one gentleman here, and I get the two-piece with this gentleman, and the three-piece is completed by my C4. How wonderful. And there's one more catfish lurking over in this building over here. I don't think it works that way, and I put him into his streak. And I don't know what Duckling did here. I don't know if he planned some sort of worm powwow. We were just worming it about up here. I don't know if he sent out invitations. I don't even think I RSVP'd to this, but somehow that sort of worm powwow tactic on the roof somehow got both objectives, and I'm very proud that we somehow did it using that special strategy. I don't know how that worked, but I have to tell you, like, Tiny Duckling is the best. I know a lot of you know how great Tiny Duckling is, but he is... He's like the typical perfect human being. Like, I believe he has some sort of advanced degree in astrophysics, and he's well versed on Confucianism scripture, and I'm pretty sure that he also has unlimited girlfriends, so I don't know if that's any kind of benchmark of what a great person is, but he's pretty great. And you guys will see later on, I die, and then I spawn on him, and it's, it's very beneficial. It's very, very beneficial for me. Like, just the spawn points that he has to offer benefit me so greatly, it's wonderful. And... I was going to talk about the scar that I was using a while ago, but I kind of got off topic. Just somehow the way that, the, the, like the thought process behind dice is just like, um, what? I, I, sometimes I just don't get it. Like I don't get how they thought the G3 and the scar were overpowered. And they're like, all right, so they're overpowered, let's nerf them. And then with this recent patch, they just brought them back to pretty much what they were pre-patch. So it's like, it's overpowered, nerf it. And the next patch, make it uh, back the way it was. I... Just don't understand that thought logic. Okay, so I get ticket down here with a PKP, but this is where Tiny Duckling saves the day again. I know I'm kind of glorifying Tiny Duckling here, but look at this. Okay, so he's smart enough to not run around because he knows he's, he's really he's like the closest to the enemy right now. He knows enough to keep his head down until I spawn. That is the intelligence of Tiny Duckling. So then I go up here and. 
Oh lord, a three piece. Just one, two, three, and then I, I get four and five. Look at these. Good morning, Carl number one and Carl number two. That's four and five. And that's, that is literally, like you think, oh, a spawn point, not all that big a deal. And overwhelming accuracy. I've got some serious laser beam bullets going on there. But you guys don't think, I, I think a lot of people don't really realize how important spawn points can be. And oh, just Tiny Duckling, instead of ramboing around and getting himself killed, he decided to keep his head down for that extra, what, second or two waiting for me to spawn. And I got five kills out of it. And an advantageous position. And. Just so you guys know, and eventually that they realized that they were not going to kill me in here, so they decided to just break it down, and they eventually did, I believe. Or they just hit a bunch of explosives, like, oh, we can't get them inside a building, might as well get out them smalls and 320s and some C4 if the potty, if the potty makes it. Like, I, I just don't get how I can be doing so well, and then it's just ruined by explosives. Like, do you ever get frustrated like that? You know what? I think about it this way. I say, you know, I, say, I just say to myself, they really cannot kill me with conventional bullets, and they have to resort to explosives to even kill me, and that that makes me feel sort of good. Like, bro, you're, bro, Cookie, you're so bad that you can't even kill me with conventional bullets. You have to use explosives. That makes me feel very, very good inside, as in I'm really destroying my opponent. And you can look at the kill feed right now. That guy's getting a few suspicious double kills as I get toxic snow here, and. I was gonna say, earlier on, just like the, uh, the uterus, no, 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 Damavon Peak always has the goofiest names, like, I'll mention that later, but that is a l what? He didn't hit me in the head, and he killed me in one bullet. Uh, this is the integration into the game of someone that I like to call a Haxor. Okay, so... The next game after this, I think everybody realized that he was hacking, or, like, look, lol, Battle Freak, you blatant duck. Every time I get killed by Battle Freak, and I checked his stats, and it's like, uh, 9kd and a 2700 score per minute. Uh, that seems legit, and Swag doesn't hack actually agree with me, lol, like, uh, nah, nah, doc, he's totally legit. Like, he's going 101-2 in consecutive games on his battle log, nah, seems legit, and even so... I believe he was, yeah, okay, so I basically said, uh, where are your hacks now? I might as well just take you out with a helicopter. And then look, look what this catfish did. He tried to get in our helicopter. Like, he tried to spawn on another gentleman that tried to steal our helicopter over here. Look at this. Like, why would you do that? That is like the lowest level of catfishery right here. You're going to steal our helicopter from our spawn? That's... I just basically said, I don't approve of your conduct, Haxor, and I, okay, I take down the helicopter, but he, he just did not get out fast enough, and I get the hacker yet again, or the Haxor, I don't, yet again, I, I, me I remember I mentioned this in the Wake Island video, I'm not a big fan of calling it hacking, because I don't think it's, that's the technical term, I believe it's cheating, or botting, or whatever it's called, but uh, this other helicopter thought, he thought he got it, but he ain't got it, dog, you ain't got it, dog, and he had to bail out. You know what's in a battle of epic proportions between my helicopter and your helicopter oftentimes you will probably win because I'm an awful helicopter pilot I know one of you called me the Russian Maverick or the Russian Iceman on one of my last videos saying I am terrible with jets and I don't for some reason I actually did sort of well in the in the helicopter I, I don't know why I don't know for some reason when I focus my entire strategy on Donald Von Peak around the helicopter I seem to do terribly like Badger, you are such a Carl, why did you even get in this machine? So I got this gentleman here, and there's Graves. Oh, Graves is the best. I got your darkness when he, when he fires the smoke onto... I'm trying to think if I like Graves more than Caitlyn. And I think, ah, uh, do I want traps instead of smoke? And uh, I think overall Caitlyn's better in lane, but still Graves is still so much damage. And if you can get the, if you can get the late game, I think Vayne pretty much trumps them all. But I'm a totally awful player in a game that I will not mention so beyond that I like to say that yeah I don't know why I like I can get this gentleman here and I believe I get even two more after this some for some reason when I build my entire strategy about being being like some kind of catfish in the helicopter I get two over here double kill the two piece I don't understand how when I build my entire strategy around the helicopter I do terribly but then when I just pick it up out of nowhere, like, eh, I'll try it, I do very well. And there was another gentleman that was a little bit jelly of my helicopter skills, and he decided to make it his life's mission to take me down. Now, I essentially annihilate this entire squad in the helicopter, and I found it so humorous. Like, just look at this. 
they're having this gab fest, like, just like the gab fest on that bit, on the previous base where I got that triple kill. Okay, I get one gentleman here, I get a second gentleman here, and, okay, now the other guy, okay, we're two gentlemen down. I damage this guy so much, he jumps out, kneecaps, bro, he breaks his kneecaps and commits suicide. So there's one pilot left in there, and he... He still wanted me so much, and most of the time, you know, I just fire RPGs at helicopters to take them down, because it's so easy, right? But I have no RPG with the support class, obviously, so I just said, eh, why don't I just use my bullet? So, and since I have an LMG that reloads in about, what, half a couple seconds, I get the gentleman, and the rotors are still turning, and the blades are still churning, and I somehow get the helicopter, and I take off instantly. So, I'm still thinking to myself, was this a good decision? And I get this gentleman here... But I'm still thinking to myself, was it a good decision? Because, yes, I think getting in this helicopter in the in the short term, if you will, was very good because I got a lot of kills with it. I To a, to a certain extent, I controlled their spawn. I'm not like, oh my god, dog, you're spawn raping, and I'm so mad at you. It's not sort of that kind of spawn rape, but I think I controlled the spawn for a few seconds. But also, too, I decided, basically, that... I don't want to be derping in the helicopter for the next 29 tickets and just waste it, and yet again, Battle Freak. Wonderful, I love I love it when hackers or aimbotters totally sway games. He got 26 kills on this one base, I, okay, that second base was his first base, but I'll, okay, I'll explain that later, but look, they got so sad the next game, just like you previously saw, like, duck off, hacker, he got, s I don't know why they, they use the D word so often, but they were, they were really talking about a lot of ducks, I didn't really understand that, but, my mother raised me to never use the D word, but, I wanted to say that, I'm still contemplating, and I'm still sort of deciphering whether, whether or not I could have won this game if he was not hacking, and I, I think to myself, or, or botting, I don't want to use this, the wrong terminology yet again, but, and I, this is the ultimate lurk spot, by the way. And, uh, like, Damavon Peak, if you can if you can find the proper lurk spot, it's essentially like, like, Karthus' ultimate. It's like, press R to win. It's, like, so easy. It's so simple to achieve victory by finding a good lurk spot. But I'm still thinking to myself, would I still have won this game if there was no aimbotter or cheater on the other team? And I say yes and no, because he only got five kills on the previous base. And he ends up with something like 31 kills, so... 26 to something like 35 kills something like that but he gets anywhere from 25 to 30 kills in one base when we only have 75 tickets that's like anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of our entire ticket count and that's got to be tremendous like i just think unicorn utters yet again and uh, the goofiest names always come up on damavon you guys saw in the i believe that was the the wake island video there was a guy with the name of uterus punch and then I, I saw another guy that, uh, that saw that video and sent me a friend request of Uterus Falcon Punch, which is absurd as it is, but Damavon Peak always has the goofiest names, you know, like, yeah, Uterus Punch, Unicorn Utters, uh, Muffin Pirate, Captain Buttbeard, like, there's so many goofy ones. And I get taken down by the helicopter here, which is sort of saddening, but I still think to myself, I'm still contemplating, like I said, would I still have won this game if there was no uh, cheater on the other team? And I still don't know. Like, I'm still not exactly sure. I think we, we definitely would have won the game if he was not here. I mean, that that's my declaration, but you can say what you want. I was just trying to stay alive on the roof for a spawn point. Kia and I believe Duckling were just jumping down constantly trying to arm it. But see, this is what happens when you get your entire squad eliminated. You have no spawn point, and you have to run from your base, and that's essentially when you lose time and you lose tickets. So... I know this kind of is a, kind of a short game, guys, but I I hope you enjoyed it. I I know I was running around and doing different things and lurking a lot. It was like ah, but it's say die Katze lief im Schnee, and uh, it's a little goofy. I I know that that game was sort of unorthodox. It's not usually just I, I know it's usually like 20 to 30 minutes of me running around and lurking in windows, but. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. And the bonus clip is just going to be me flanking. And I don't want to say the benefits of flanking because I know there are a lot better master flankers compared to me. But hopefully you guys enjoy the bonus clip. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.